we got to have a blood supply. The whole point of this is to filter the blood. So somehow we're going to have to get intimate connection between our nephron and blood. And ultimately, we're going to move fluid from the blood into the nephron tubule, into this tube right here. That's the whole point. So let's throw in some blood structures. First of all, who brings blood to the kidney overall? It's going to be the renal artery. And who drains blood from the kidney overall? The renal vein. No problem. And there are many additional branches of renal blood vessels that we're not going to deal with. The first one that we care about and that we want to spend some time looking at is called the afferent arteriole. And does it work for you that ultimately the renal artery is going to branch into a whole bunch of afferent arterioles? There is going to be one afferent arteriole for every single glomerulus in your kidney. So there's a million of these afferent arterioles in each kidney. I'm going to draw you the afferent arteriole. Afferent, what does it make you think? Going toward something. And in fact, we're going toward the structure that I'm going to draw next, which is called the glomerulus. So the afferent arteriole is this thing right here, and the afferent arteriole feeds into a knot of capillaries called the glomerulus. Do you see what I just did here? Okay. This, I'm going to label it in black. That right there is my glomerulus. I feel like I want to show you a picture of a glomerulus. It looks like we have some time to look at the anatomy of that thing in particular. But right now, think of it as a serious, hardcore tangle of capillaries. It's not a net of capillaries. It's a tangle. And one vessel, the afferent arteriole, feeds into this net of capillaries. Notice the proximity of this capillary net to Bowman's capsule or the renal cap corpuscle this area here, um, the glomerular capsule. Afferent arteriole feeds in. Guess who feeds out? The efferent arteriole. And here's something that is really interesting. Notice, if you will, the different diameter of the afferent arteriole as opposed to the efferent arteriole. Blood comes into the glomerulus through the afferent arteriole. It's hanging out in the glomerulus, but now it has this much smaller exit route through the efferent arteriole. That's significant, and that's very significant to understanding um, nephron function. Efferent arteriole, you ready for this? Efferent arteriole feeds into, now this is a net. It is, it is not a line. I'm drawing it like it's a line. And I'm drawing it like a line so that you can kind of visualize the ultimate outcome. And I feel like it's probably a good idea for me to make this a tube so that you can see. This tube is another net of capillaries. Okay, so the efferent arteriole feeds into another net of capillaries that I've just drawn as one structure here, but this is actually a net, and this is, they're called peritubular, peri around tubular, around the nephron tubule, peritubular capillaries. And they surround the nephron in a net, and they actually um, play 
a role in reabsorbing stuff that we filter out into our nephron. Paratubular capillaries, in some nephrons, there is a very long paratubular capillary called the vasa recta. And this is also significant for understanding function. So keep this in mind that sometimes one example of a paratubular capillary, a specific example of a paratubular capillary is the vasa recta. We're going to talk about the vasa recta again. The other thing that I just want to throw out there, and I want you to just notice this right now. Look at the way that I drew the blood flow. Do you see how my blood and then ultimately, ooh, that makes it look like my blood is heading out through the collecting duct. It's not. It's headed out through the renal vein. Do you see my whole blood flow here? Really fast, just for the fun of it, because you know it is so much fun. Really fast, draw in arrows, orange arrows, showing filtrate, showing pre-P. Remember, we started in Bowman's capsule. We went into the proximal convoluted tubule, down the descending loop of Henle. What do you notice right here? Up the ascending loop of Henle. Notice that the blood supply and the filtrate, they're moving in opposite directions. That is extremely significant for function. You now have a blood supply and a tubule. Now I want to look at what are the, we can actually boil down all nephron function to four things. And understanding those four things is going to be critical for looking at the specifics of each part of the nephron that we're going to look at. Okay, so mechanisms of function, that's what's coming next.